This is a bigger bubble than the one that blew up in 2008. We have more debt than ever before. Individuals, corporations, the government is loaded up with debt. And as interest rates go up, that debt is unserviceable. Yeah, but what else, Peter? <laughs> that was Euro Pacific Capital CEO and town crier of Wall Street, Peter Schiff, on our show yesterday, shining a harsh spotlight on our nation's massive debt and deficit. Huge national price tags face us right now. Hurricanes Michael and Florence caused widespread damage across the southeast. The GOP's promise to get funding for President Trump's multi-billion dollar border wall after the midterms to Capitol Hill simply trying to keep the lights on as another budget deadline looms in December just in time for the holiday season. But with news that corporate taxes collected by the government are dropping to the skimpiest levels in 75 years, in part due to the corporate tax cuts, where will the government get the funds to pay for all of this? Gordon Gray of the American Action Forum says the money's there. Maya McGinnis, president of the Committee for a Responsible Budget, says it is not. They both join me now. Uh, I will begin first with you, Gordon. Uh, let's start with the hurricanes alone. Michael's the 12th billion dollar uh, disaster to hit the United States this year alone. Just with that, you've got to tell me where the money's coming from. Well, in the near term, uh, I really don't worry about the U.S.'s ability to raise the cash to pay its bills. Um, just this week, um, between the three-year and the 10-year um, Treasury notes, the, the Treasury put out $50 billion in, in a single day. Um, between now and the end of the year, uh, we're going to, in gross terms, issue uh, on the order of $2 trillion in debt. That's not net. That also includes the part that's refinancing existing debt. But there's a market for our debt. People want to give us, give us their cash for our debt. Um, so we can liquidate our obligations in the near term. That includes storms and, and other bills coming due. But um, I am very concerned about the medium and long term state of our finances and our growing deficits. Uh, when the interest rates uh, do eventually normalize, uh, are, we're going to be paying more in interest yes, and debt service are. costs than we will in okay. the military. So, so that's why, uh, and other uh, hold major on, that's why that's that, I want to get Maya in here because that's why the near term actually is crucial and important. Maya, the government's coffers, are they flush with money? Right. Well, so Gordon and I obviously agree that the long term and the medium term is a real problem. But without question, the situation we're in right now is incredibly problematic. And as you pointed out in just in your last segment, there's a whole lot going on in the world right now. There's security issues. There's natural disasters. There's stock market gyrations. The last thing you want to have is an unhealthy balance sheet, which is now what we have in this country. At the very time when our economy is growing, our debt is growing even faster. And in many ways, in most ways right now, unfortunately, it's self-imposed. And it comes from the fact that our lawmakers are really not budgeting anymore. They are putting they didn't everything even, they on didn't the credit even, card. They did not even, Gordon, cut spending. You know, if you're going to cut taxes, That's correct. then pair it with cutting spending. You've got corporations now who were paying 35 percent. Now it's 21 percent. There's a hole now that's that needs to be filled. And we're seeing the tax receipts from corporations coming in at the worst levels in 75 years. Uh, I thought from both Treasury and the president that the tax cuts would pay for themselves. Uh, well, uh, I never believed that a tax cut uh, would pay for itself. However, it's important to put the, the corporate change, at least, in context. Corporate tax receipts make up uh, a relative fraction of our overall um, tax collections, at least compared to uh, individual income taxes and, pay and payroll tax receipts. Um, so the, the relative decline in the corporate uh, tax receipts isn't, that con isn't as consequential, uh, in my view, as the individual rate cuts, which were very expensive. My own view is that uh, tax reform should have been done on a revenue-neutral basis. It wasn't. Oh, well. It added to the <laughs> debt. But, it's, but it certainly was not. Um, you know, we had $10 trillion in baseline deficits before the tax yeah, cut happened. Okay. So we had a budget problem. We still have a budget problem. Maya, what's your biggest fear with all of this? How will people feel this in the near term, if at all? Well, my biggest fear right now is that the fiscal situation in this country is really a reflection of how broken our governance system is, that we're no longer willing to make hard choices, trade-offs. Just like you said, everybody said the tax cut was going to pay for itself. It was never going to pay for itself. Just like people are about to start saying that new spending programs will pay for themselves, and they won't. And we don't have politicians on either side who are now willing to say, these are the choices we have to make. If we want to cut taxes, let's cut spending also. They're not doing that. The result is it's going to slow the economy. 
if and when we have a real downturn or more disasters, we don't have the fiscal ability to respond in the way that we should. And it's going to leave all American families back, uh, in a worse economic position. Wages will be slower. It will have a longer term effect on jobs. Ultimately, we're basically just handing the bill to our children and saying, we don't want to pay it. You all do it. That's not the way you remain an economic superpower. So my real mm -hmm. concern is that we have to fix the way that we make decisions in Washington, and we have to stay the strongest economy in the world. Well, uh, I think anybody who runs a household knows that you don't run deficits during flush times when you have the right. money. You pay off the credit card before you buy the Citroen Maserati. Uh, Gordon, Maya, we'd love to have you both back because it is a developing story. December 8th is when the, the lights go off at the U.S. government. We'll see if that happens. 